Thanks for joining us on this special budget program on Bloomberg TV India. Expectations are running high that the finance minister will unveil measures to tame the deficit. What does India want from this budget? To discuss this, I am joined by India's top economist Sonal Verma, executive director, India economist at Nomura, Shubhda Rao, chief economist at Yes Bank. I will also be joined by Devika Mendiratha from the senior economist at ANZ from Singapore. Thank you so much for joining us, both of you. Sonal, let me begin by asking you about what do you expect this budget to be? Will this be a budget that's likely to be big bang in reform announcements, or do you think this will be incremental in nature? We need to have realistic expectations <laughs> from the budget. Uh, the government has been in power for what uh, one month. Uh, mm. Therefore, uh, probably it's going to be one. We are expecting some credibility in terms of the numbers that are presented. You know, sort of a medium-term path towards consolidation. Sure. Uh, and I think uh, it's going to be a lot about a statement of intent of the government in terms of what it intends to do over the course of the next, let's say, five years. Sure. Uh, delivery of which, implementation of which, will get uh, you know through as we move forward. So we need to keep the expectations realistic. Not everything can be announced on 10th of July. Sure. Um, a large part of the discussion about this government, Shubhda, has been about uh, the, the problems that were created by the previous government. Will this be largely about correcting the mistakes of the past or do you think this, the government will use this as a platform to announce a, a, a new vision for the economy? I think it would be a combination of both because mm. the first two years of this five-year term clearly are, should be dedicated for repair and, you know, sure. uh, uh, mending the economy uh, and also the FISC, more importantly. And uh, secondly, of course, pave way for the growth to take off, particularly investment-led. Mm. So this time round, the budget is going to be watched for both part A of the speech and part B of the speech. Mm. Part A, where the reforms and the agenda with a credible roadmap with timelines. I think that is what probably everyone would be looking for because in the past we have seen the intent mm. but with open uh, uh, timelines uh, there hasn't been any credibility to that. Sure. This time round, uh, for example, if it's a GST, if the government announces a clear timeline uh, mm. for it to be implemented, it would bring in some confidence. It would be a lot in terms of how the retrospective taxation and uh, the issues uh, like such are dealt with within a year or so. Sure. I think that would bring in confidence. Part B becomes important because fiscal arithmetic is, as Sonal was saying, sure. extremely uh, uh, you know important to watch out for. Does the government have uh, the appetite at this point in time to completely clear the spillover of expenditures sure. from last year to this year? In that case, we could see uh, you know fiscal deficit move a little bit higher right. as compared to what the interim budget was presenting at 4.1. Sure. We could look at a 4.3, but you know it, it would be backed by an improvement in mm the depiction of government finances and the numbers. Sure. So I think equally it becomes important uh, in terms of uh, big bang reforms. I think we need to watch out for what is the government, uh, uh, you know, uh, inclining towards uh, creating space for capital spending right. and a, a clear, uh, uh, you know, cutting off subsidies or right sizing. So subsidies. you're expecting those those things to be announced? I, I would think it would be, it sure. would begin. Let me get uh, Devika also on this conversation. Devika, uh, on fiscal consolidation specifically, you've heard, whatever we heard from the government so far, uh, has been about that the government will follow the path of fiscal prudence, they will take the tough decisions and so on. Uh, do you think that number of 4.1 is likely to be met? Uh, how are you seeing this? Hi, Harsha. Uh, you know, we're expecting them to, uh, to deliver a reasonably impressive budget in the sense that the macro backdrop is pretty challenging. Uh, particularly now that you have these drought worries, uh, you know, uh, on on our on our heads right now. Uh, but I think they will manage to uh, project a, a reasonably uh, credible uh, reduction in the deficit, not too much, probably to what we're expecting about to 4.2 or 4.3 percent of GDP. But in quality, it should be better. And importantly, I think they will manage to uh, do a bit on uh, f you know subsidy reduction. So I'm not too sure of markets expecting this, but I would. Uh, definitely expect them to, for example, it's been a long time, uh, so, you know, price hikes in LPG and kerosene, uh, about 12 to 20 percent of hikes there. Uh, I think they would uh, act on that to show pretty clearly that, yes, it's a challenging time, but we remember that we have to get, you know, our priority for fiscal consolidation is very much on track, maybe even more, uh, a bit more on diesel. 
I would have, you know, I would have gone as far as saying that they would do something on urea prices as well. But given that we have drought worries, I think they will avoid that in the budget this time around. But later in the year, if things go fine, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they act on that. And the second pillar really would be, I think they would aggressively target, uh, you know, disinvestment revenues. Um, the I, government has I'll, managed I'll to I'll come to the point of disinvestment in just a moment. Uh, but, you know, Sonal, do you think this, the government is likely to go ahead and, you know, make announcement on subsidies, overhaul Narega? Uh, are, are those things realistic, you would think? I think what we saw with the decision on gas price hike and mm. uh, then the clarification from the oil minister that LPG kerosene decisions are not proposal is not on the table right sure. now. Um, you know, one, we are of course facing the monsoon challenge and second, you have state elections coming up later this year. So, mm -hmm. I think uh, what one can see uh, is sort of the government strategy mm -hmm on how to tackle the subsidies. Sure. So, it could mean, you know, ultimately deregulation of diesel. It would mean a staggered increase in prices of LPG, kerosene mm. and urea, uh, but not necessarily, you know, actual increases coming from 11th of July. Sure. Uh, so, again, you know, more sort of a strategy mm. on how they are going to tackle it over a period of time, mm. but because of certain concerns, not immediately announcing this. But I think a strategy is very important because otherwise, what is the credibility Correct. of the consolidation path that they are laying out? So it is very important to have some, uh, you know, uh, reasons uh, why investors and markets should believe mm. uh, that deficit is going to come down. Sure. Le let me let me shift this discussion right out to inflation. Uh, we've seen the challenge of inflation all this while. Throw in two more variables: monsoon and oil prices. Uh, is that number likely to get worse? You would think. I think uh, you know the point is the oil price impact in any case there's a lot of suppressed inflation pass through that has to happen sure so with or without the iraq issue there is some amount of there is actually a substantial amount of suppressed inflation on oil which will get released mm. uh, over the course of the next couple of years sure as far as the monsoon impact on food is concerned, I think so far the increases we've seen on vegetable prices mm. actually has been in line with the seasonal increases you see. Right. Typically, vegetable prices go up summer months, you mm. know, July, in fact, prices are up 25% month on month. Mm. So, so far the increases we've seen is in line, has been in line with the inflation so trends. So, what can the government do then? What, what, do you expect anything at all the government to say on curtailing food prices and so on? They've taken some measures already. They have taken some measures. I think, you know, we need to understand what the government can control. Right. I mean, you know, as far as the cereal price inflation is concerned, there, you know, you can offload, you know, rice and wheat mm. and get inflation down. Mm. You can take some tough measures, you know, against hoarders as far as items that can be stored like potato and onion are concerned, mm. which they have done. Which they've done. But, you know, the point is that the inflation increase has been driven by multiple other factors. Sure. Things like MSPs, which are now growing at a slower pace. Correct. Things like the protein food items, where there isn't much that the government can do except to increase supply in the medium term. Sure. So, the focus, therefore, the immediate measures that could have been done, I think they are already taking a lot of proactive measures. Sure. And now, a lot of decisions have to be in terms of how do you tackle the demand supply gap mm. in various food products over the next five years, sure. for which there has to be a medium term strategy. I think the short term things that they could do, they are They've already, already done. doing. What more can the government do, Shubda? I think clearly in incentivizing agriculture infrastructure, we mm. all know that we are uh, the topmost producers in most of the horticulture items. Sure. Uh, even among cereals and uh, uh, oil seeds, we fairly rank well. Right. I think critical to, uh, you know, bringing agriculture back on a sustainable path of growth mm. with, uh, you know, all the vagaries of monsoon being contained and restrained is clearly creating enough agriculture infrastructure. Sure. Uh, even in the agriculture produce segment, Mm. Vegetables, yes. Cereals, yes. You can have some say in the matter. Mm. But what are the shortfalls going to likely come from? Pulses and oil seeds, mm. where we are already seeing some, uh, you know, uh, laggard uh, sowing pattern. Mm. So that is where the government will have to watch out for. Will it be able to import uh, oil seeds and pulses because they form a fair amount in terms of weightage, in terms right. of, uh, you know, price pressures and create uh, uh, measuring the index. Sure. So I think government will have to take the short term measures, no doubt about it. They'll have to be on their feet all the time, particularly in these uh, two or three months. But as Sonal was also saying, I think medium term strategy becomes equally important mm. because you don't want, though it is just 14% of uh, 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 GDP, but its impact on inflation has been pretty high over the last few years. Right. So medium term strategy has to be in place, creating supply
supply chains, warehousing, cold storages, everything. Mm. Capital formation in agriculture has been seriously lacking. Correct. It has been below 7% if you take it as a ratio to full GDP. Sure. So I think that's where the government needs to put out its path of planning. And you, and you think they will do that this budget? Uh, well, I think this budget is not a panacea to everything that sure, we have point, seen over the last. At least the intent mm. needs to be put out. As I said, switch of cap of expenditure becomes extremely important. Now, for example, Narega, sure. if they tie to asset creation, it becomes more credible. Mm. Or if they have uh, uh, various, uh, you know, for food, if you look at the budget of last mm. many years, there are four or five programs on food which target the same, mm. uh, you know, set of people, women, lactating mothers, children, okay? Uh, all That's of these programs be have been underutilized, the mm. budget allocations. Mm. So it needs to be carefully planned as to why these 10 programs should exist for one particular agenda. Fair point. Uh, yeah, let me ask the same question to Devika. You know, uh, Devika, here in Mumbai, it's raining. But in the last five years, I mean, this is, we've seen the worst rainfall so far in the last five years. What, what do you think are the risks the, to food inflation? What can the government be doing? I think I broadly agree with, the, you know, with the Sonal and Shubhada that there isn't food, unfortunately, is structural. So I don't think there's too much they can do. Uh, yes, on cereals, uh, you know, the mainly what they can do is cereals, and that can pull a dent if they manage to control rice and wheat prices. But the others are, are very difficult to control, and I'm actually a bit worried. Some argue that, you know what, in 2002, when we had a really bad drought, you didn't really see that bad an impact on food prices because the government had, you know, offloaded stocks of rice and wheat. But, you know, then it was different. I think that structurally things have changed in early 2000s versus now. I think just the demand-supply balance for non-cereal foods is just so tight that any any time you see a bit of a uh, supply problem, you know, even if it's a slight disbalance, you tend to get larger spikes than you would have seen in early 2000s. So it's definitely something worrying. And unfortunately, the bad news is that, you, you know, there isn't too much that you can do about it. I'm going to take in, a break on that note. Term. When we come back, I want to talk specifically about growth. And what about the big bank reform measures? Will divestment be one big idea that you will see some execution back on the other side? Watching this special panel discussion on budget expectations, I'm in conversation with India's top economist Sonal Verma from Nomura, Shubhda Rao from Yes Bank, and Devika Mendiratha coming in, joining us from ANC in Singapore. Uh, so now, we were talking about you know inflation and so on. I want to talk specifically about growth. Do you think this prospect of high oil prices and weak monsoon is going to undermine India's recovery process? Um, I mean, monsoon to an extent on the agri side, uh, yes, maybe. But the point is, you know, these are transitory factors. Mm. You know, the fundamentally, the reason why we've slowed down has been a lot to do with decision making not happening. Sure. And to that extent, you know, uh, clearly the pace of decision making has uh, has become much faster. Now, it may take time for that to show up in real activity numbers, but sure. decision making has been faster. Sure. Plus, if you look at the auto numbers, then actually the pickup in discretionary demand has been quite strong. So, mm. I think uh, a slow and gradual pickup in the growth recovery is uh, clearly on the cards. Sure. Um, what the government can do, what can the government do to boost growth? Right. You know, we talk about capital expenditure versus revenue expenditure. I mean, these classifications mm. uh, may may not be right. Mm. Uh, you know, there would be some part of uh, revenue expenditure which also could be capex related. But sure. I think broadly public investment on infrastructure uh, that needs to go up mm. uh, could be on infrastructure, not just in roads and power could be, you know, like Shubda was saying in agri supply chain, mm. irrigation, mm. etc. Mm. So that is one. Uh, but I think more importantly, you know, creating a conducive environment. Ultimately, government cannot just boost Correct. growth on itself. So what do we mean by conducive environment? It means, means on taxation policies. Sure. Uh, and uh, also, I think we need to think about where do we get the money to finance this? Correct. Do we want to tap retail investment? Do we want to tap foreign investment? Then what do we need to do to get more foreign flows into the country? I think some of these are some of the issues that... Uh, should get addressed uh, in the budget. We are not expecting the government to, you know, hugely increase expenditure sure. uh, to boost kickstart the economy. Uh, that is not necessary. Uh, some allocation is fine, but it's more about creating the right environment. 
That's a, that's a fair point. Devika, you know, the conducive environment for growth is something that the BJP has said in its manifesto as well. Uh, specifically on the point of growth, yeah. uh, what do you expect? You, we've spoken ad nauseum for the last year about investment cycle being broken and so on. Uh, what can the government do to perhaps bring confidence back uh, for the corporate to look perhaps at 2016 that he's looking at expanding capacities? I think... I think first and foremost, I mean, if you're thinking from a budget perspective, what's, what's absolutely critical is that there is no flip-flop and there's stability in policy. So we don't want to see something announced, let's say, and then down the line it, they forget about it or they go back on it. You know? So it's very important to have stability, whether it's tax policy or anything else at all. Mm. Um, again, from a, uh, you know, what is required is, uh, I think, pretty clear. Uh, to fundamentally really lift in, uh, investment spending in particular, you need, um, you know, what will give a big boost in terms of confidence would be if your land acquisition, environmental clearances, these issues, at least there's indication that they're, you know, they're getting there and they're going to be resolving it, not for a one-time, you know, one-year kind of perspective, but resolving it once and for all. Mm. Um, so I think that is really going to be quite critical. That's, but unfortunately, that's going to take time. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And if I'm again thinking from a budget perspective, mm. I would actually say that it's difficult to do, the, do it, you know, because spending is obviously restrained. But if the, if the government could somehow manage to reorient spending and have a bit of a fund where they're going to be, uh, you know, government funded infrastructure uh, projects where, sure. because the thing is that uh, at least infrastructure, private sector interest in PPP is absolutely zero right now. Sure. So if the government can oh, do absolutely. some bit of uh, spending which is funded by itself, I think that can really help spark, uh, you know, some confidence in the infrastructure sector. I'm not too sure if they'll do it or not, but if yeah. they can manage it, that will be quite a huge positive. That's a, that's a good point. Uh, let, me, let me talk about capital, Shubhda. You know, look, look at the markets right now. We're, we're sitting on about $20 billion of foreign money that's come in both in equity and debt put together. Um, do you see that sustaining? And... Uh, where, you know, where is the value? You know, what, what are foreign investors chasing in this market? I, I think it's more the growth prospects mm. uh, rather than the current valuations that is keeping the markets extremely buoyant and mm. investors, you know, looking at a horizon maybe beyond just one year. Mm. So I think that's the basic tenet for which or the capital boom is happening in the currently uh, at this point post-election. Uh, you know, it's not just uh, uh, how growth pans out this year because this year it's going to be likely around five, five and a half. Mm. Uh, you know, if if government does actually affect a lot of its intent in sure. to implementation. Uh, but it's growth beyond this year as well. Which but let me ask important. you this. So are capital flow decisions impinging on this budget? Uh, I, I, I am in what sense? No, no. My point is really is if, if I, will the market, is the market likely to be disappointed? And in I the will, budget? Yeah. I, I would not think so. Uh, well, initial euphoria has been there for everyone to see. That is budget expectations and even the rally post elections. Mm. But I think somewhere uh, the investors are also grounded in reality mm. in terms of how long it's going to take the government, for the government to, uh, you know, uh, uh, mend the economy. Sure. As long as, uh, you know, we all have been saying through the show that the intent and the, uh, you know, implementation, mm. uh, if it is well laid out, mm. I think investors would draw confidence from that. Sure. So, uh, you know, be it taxation or be it uh, incentivizing consumption, I think this year's budget is all going to be not looking at incentivizing consumption, right. but incentivizing investment, mm. uh, creating jobs through trust on jobs. Jobs are not going to come by in within a month or two. Sure. But unless and until you incentivize investments, the next stage is the job expansion happens and the sustainable so growth. So it's going to take, take a while is it's what you're saying. It's going to take a beyond a year. Sure. Uh, one, one, one idea is, is on divestment, Sonal. You know, while everyone agrees that this is going to, this is not likely to be a big bang budget, the government has already made an announcement saying that it's going to double its divestment target. Uh, you know, some Bloomberg numbers show that about $300 billion of market cap for government-owned co companies out there. Uh, do you think this is likely to work? Will there be foreign investor interest if there is a divestment program, uh, which wasn't the case last year? Yeah, it should sail through. I mean, uh, there is uh, appetite uh, for India uh, mm. from foreign investors' uh, perspective. So if uh, the government takes some of the right decisions, then actually a lot of this divestment will sail through. Mm. Uh, but ultimately, you know, what one wants to see is more sustainable sources of deficit reduction and not through the one-off sources.
Mm. So if the deficit number, let's say, comes in, you know, below what everyone is expecting, but it's entirely because of disinvestment and sure. nothing untouched, nothing touched on subsidy, then the quality of consolidation clearly will be disappointing. So yes, disinvestment will happen, mm. uh, but I think there has to be also some work on reducing some of the subsidies or at least some strategy on reducing the subsidies. This alone cannot be the sole source of reduction in the deficit. Sure. But otherwise, I don't see a big problem in uh, the disinvestment process going through. Uh, the demand for Indian assets uh, and quite for, is quite high. Uh, Devika, would you agree? Would uh, Do you think the stake sale of government-owned companies uh, bridge the revenue shortfall? Yes, I think I would agree with Sonal that I am positive that, you know, if they are going to be setting a higher target, they're going to be a lot more serious than the previous government in achieving it mm. because that is, that is a, you know, an easy and quick source of revenue. Uh, why would they let go of that? Mm. And uh, the SEBI regulations, uh, the, you know, the easing of rules that we saw, especially for non-promoters being able to do an offer for sale, I think that will help, for example, Hindustan Zinc. Mm. Uh, so that'll get hopefully get a nice big lump sum uh, into the pocket. Uh, so yes, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm definitely positive uh, on that. Of course, there's no debate that that's not something they should be relying on for years to come. But it's definitely uh, you know at a, at a time when you have a very tricky mac macro backdrop, there isn't too much you can do on other fronts. Uh, I think uh, they would rely on that, and nothing nothing wrong on that. And I, but I'm a little bit more positive in the sense uh, that I also do expect some action on subsidy, like I said on kerosene and LPG, and I don't see why, I don't see much excuse for them to not uh, take action on that in the budget. All right. One last round of questioning. Uh, Shubhita, wh where does this leave the rupee? You know, uh, we are seeing on one hand capital flows coming in. On the other hand, you've got the inflation problem. You've got Iraq happening. How do you see the rupee behaving? I think uh, by and large, as the uh, uh, economy sees a better mix of growth inflation balance, mm. growth prospects getting better and inflation notwithstanding the impact of monsoon and, uh, you know, the short term impact of oil. Uh, uh, let's not forget the low, uh, the, the contained move in rupee has somehow managed the uh, impact of, uh, uh, you know, oil prices getting sure. contained to a large extent. So overall, I think if you were to look at slightly beyond two, three months, uh, there is some appreciation bias building into rupee. Mm. Uh, I, I would think rupee would uh, test uh, levels of 58, uh, sure. uh, you know. RBI intervention definitely needs to be washed out for. We do see that close to 60, mm. uh, you know, we are seeing uh, a pretty much heavy intervention by RBI. Right. Uh, they have intervened a lot in the forward markets, which mm. is distorting actually the forward so premium. So in this range, you would you would, you would I, I would see. think 58, 60 would sure. be something that you would expect. But clearly, the appreciation bias would be there as we progress through the year. Sure. So now, what would you like to hear from uh, Finance Minister Jaitley on, on the 10th? Credible numbers mm. uh, for FI15. Uh, a medium-term roadmap mm. backed by some measures, if not immediately, then a strategy on how they are going to tackle uh, subsidies, uh, a stable environment on taxation policies, measures to incentivize uh, savings, mm. uh, and uh, measures to attract more foreign capital in order for India to fund the domestic growth story. Devika, last word with you. What would you like to hear from the Finance Minister? Um. I would like to hear the fact that, uh, yes, I mean, like Sonal said, right, credibility. Uh, we don't want anything hidden under the budget, mm. which we suddenly discover once you announce it, we get excited then, and later we're like, oh, that, does, that doesn't seem to work. <laughs> so, you know, maybe pay off all the dues that are there on subsidies uh, and not keep rolling them uh, over or hiding them. Uh, and uh, like I said, I would, uh, would definitely expect some action on subsidy and I'd be disappointed if they don't do that. Definitely hear something on what they plan to do with urea prices because that's the next big uh, you know, uh, worry area in terms of subsidies. Mm. Um, yes, uh, mainly this. All right, let's really leave it there. Many thanks indeed for joining us on this special panel discussion. If you have been, thank you so much for watching.